Well, <clears throat> here I am in my favorite place. I'm outside on my deck. I've got my dogs out here. My fire pit is going. It's a little chilly today, so I thought I'd turn it on. Our Wayside School chapters are 26 and 27 today, and this one's called The Mean Mrs. Jules. We decided we were going to learn why she has those crazy ears, crazy look on her face. Everybody in Mrs. Jules's class thought she was a very nice teacher. They were wrong. There is no such thing as a nice teacher. If you think you have a nice teacher, then you're wrong too. Inside every nice teacher, there is a mean and rotten teacher bursting to get out. The nicer the teacher is on the outside, the meaner the teacher is on the inside. As Mrs. Jules was changing the bulletin board before class, a mean and rotten voice whispered inside her brain. Give the children lots of busy work today, it said, and then make them do it over again if their handwriting isn't perfect. Mrs. Jules tried very hard to ignore the voice. She didn't like giving busy work. Instead, she tried to teach the children three new things every day. She believed that if they learned three new things every day, they would eventually learn everything there is to know. There are some classes where the teachers give so much busy work that the children never really learn anything. What do you care if the children learn anything, asked the mean and rotten voice. It's your job to teach them. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not your job to teach them. It's your job to punish them. Keep them in at recess. Hit them with your yardstick. The bell rang and the children scurried to their desks. We are going to learn three new things today, Mrs. Jules announced. How to make pickles, seven plus four, and the capital of England. All the children paid close attention. The capital of England is London, said Mrs. Jules. Seven plus four equals 11. are made by sticking cucumbers in brine. On her desk she had a box of cucumbers and a vat or a jar of brine for demonstration. Okay Joe said Mrs. Jules how much is seven plus four? Joe shrugged but I just told you Joe said Mrs. Jules weren't you listening? I don't know said Joe. Okay who can tell me how pickles are made? Yes, Jason. Eleven, Jason declared. Mrs. Jules frowned. That's the correct answer, she said, but unfortunately, I didn't ask the right question. Can anyone tell me how pickles are made? Yes, Bebe. In London, said Bebe. I suppose they make pickles in London, said Mrs. Jules. Okay, let's start again. Calvin, what's the capital of England? Could you write England on the board, asked Calvin. I can do a lot better when I can see the question. Mrs. Jules wrote England on the board. Oh, okay, said Calvin, now that he saw the question. The capital of England is a capital E. Yes, that's one capital of England, Mrs. Jules had to admit. Okay, I will say it one more time. The capital of England is London. Isn't that where they make pickles? asked Jenny. No, they don't make all the pickles in London, explained Allison. Just 11. Well, where do they make the rest of the pickles? asked Stephen. Get quiet, shouted Mrs. Jules. Well, that does it. You're all staying inside for recess. Everyone stared at her. Mrs. Jules had never told anyone to get quiet like that. It was against the class rules for anyone to shout that way. If you did, you had to write your name on the blackboard under the word discipline. Mrs. Jules put her hand over her mouth, then she took it away. Oh dear, I'm very sorry, she said. I don't know what came over me. 
She wrote her name on the blackboard under the word discipline. Perhaps you'll learn the lesson better if you write it down, she suggested. Everyone, please take out a piece of paper and a pickle. Everyone laughed. Pencil, snapped Mrs. Jules. I meant to say pencil. It came out pickle. I didn't know pickles came from pencil, said Jenny. I thought they came from cucumbers. I thought they came from London, said Todd. Mrs. Jules made an ugly face. Todd, didn't I just tell you to get quiet, she asked. She picked up her yardstick and held it over Todd's head. Well, answer me. Yes, said Todd. How dare you talk back to me, snapped Mrs. Jules. Didn't I just tell you to get quiet? Todd kept his mouth shut. Well, answer me, she demanded. Todd didn't know what to do. He nodded his head. Keep still, ordered Mrs. Jules. Now, I don't want you to say another word. Is that clear? Todd stared at her. Is that clear? She asked again. Yes, Todd said meekly. Mrs. Jules slammed down her yardstick. Todd quickly moved out of the way. The yardstick banged against his desk and broke in half. Mrs. Jules stared at the 18 inches she held in her hand. Oh my goodness, she said. I'm sorry, Todd. I don't know what's the matter with me today. I must have gotten up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. She put a check next to her name under the word discipline. Okay, let me make this very simple, she said. If I have seven cucumbers and I, give four, and I get four more cucumbers and then I drop all the cucumbers in a brine and take them to the capital of England, what do I have, how many, and where am I? Huh, said DJ. What, asked John. Could you write the question on the board, please, asked Rondi. Get quiet, Mrs. Jules yelled a third time in a mocking voice. Could you please write the question on the board? You kids think you're so cute. Well, we'll see just how cute you really are. She picked up the vat of brine from her desk. How would you like it if I poured this on your heads? You won't be so cute when you're all shriveled up and covered with warts like pickles. She walked up and down the aisles, carrying the pickle juice, glaring at the children. No one dared to make a sound. She stopped next to Leslie. How about you, Leslie? She asked. How would you like pickled pigtails? Leslie trembled. Her pigtails wiggled. Well, I'm not going to ask you three. Well, I'm going to ask you three questions, Leslie, said Mrs. Jules. And if you don't answer them all correctly, I'm going to dump this on your head. Leslie gulped. <clears throat> Question one, said Mrs. Jules. How much is seven plus four? Leslie quickly tried to count on her fingers, but she didn't have enough. Eleven, she gasped. A look of disappointment came over Mrs. Jules' face. Okay, question two. What is the capital of England? L London, Leslie said nervously. Rats, said Mrs. Jules. Okay, question three. She looked down at the vat of brine she was holding and shook her head. She thought for a moment and then she smiled. What is the name of my cousin who lives in Vermont? Leslie had no idea, so she just had to take a wild guess. She closed her eyes and said, Fred Jules? Wrong, exclaimed Mrs. Jules. She raised the vat of brine high above Leslie's head and started to tip it over. Paul jumped out of his seat. Those pigtails had once saved his life, and now it was his turn to return the favor. He pushed the vat of brine back the other way. He was just trying to push it up straight, but he pushed too far and it poured all over Mrs. Jules, drenching her. Paul froze in terror. Mrs. Jules blinked her eyes. Pickle juice dripped down from her face. Thanks, Paul, she said. I needed that. The brine had cured her. She circled her name on the blackboard and sent herself home early on the kindergarten bus. <laughs> the me, Mrs. Jules. So she's holding the vat of brine to put the pickles in. Okay. All right. So we are going to do chapter 27. It's called Lost and Found. Lost and Found. Hi, Parker. Buddy. Joy and Mauricia were best friends. They sat down on the grass to eat their lunches. 
But then Mauricia remembered she needed chocolate milk. She went to get some from Miss Mush. When she returned, she couldn't find her lunch. What happened to my lunch, she asked. Joy looked up at her and shrugged her shoulders. I set my lunch down right here, said Mauricia. You saw me, didn't you? Joy shook her head. I put it here, and then I went to Miss Mush's room to get some chocolate milk. I had a peanut butter and banana sandwich, and there's no way I can eat a peanut butter and banana sandwich without chocolate milk. Joy shrugged her shoulders. Mauricia didn't know what to do. Can I have a sip of your milk? Asked Joy. It was hard for Joy to talk because her mouth was full of peanut butter and bananas. Hmm. Mauricia handed Joy the carton of chocolate milk. Joy took a big drink and swallowed. Mauricia looked all around for her lunch. She crawled in the dirt as she searched through the bushes. Any luck? asked Joy as she finished Mauricia's chocolate milk. I found it, Mauricia exclaimed. Joy coughed on the chocolate milk. You did? she asked and coughed again. Mauricia crawled out of the bushes holding a paper sack. She sat back down next to Joy and opened it. Is it your lunch? asked Joy. No, said Mauricia. Too bad, said Joy. It's money, exclaimed Mauricia. Joy's eyes nearly popped out of her head as she looked at the paper bag. It was stuffed with dollar bills. And they weren't just one dollar bills. There were a few five dollar bills, ten dollar bills, but it was mostly twenty dollar bills. We found a million dollars, Joy whispered. We? asked Mauricia. They counted the money. It wasn't a million dollars. It was twenty it was twenty thousand six hundred and fifty-five dollars. Let's split it, said Joy. You take half, I'll take half. Maybe I should show it to Lewis, said Mauricia. Lewis, exclaimed Joy, are you crazy? Let's spend it. We can buy a skateboard or a bicycle or a horse or a fancy car or an airplane. I like taking the bus, said Mauricia. You could buy ice cream, said Joy. All the ice cream you ever want for the rest of your life. She knew Mauricia loved ice cream more than anything else in the world. Mauricia smiled as she thought about it. Hmm. No, I better show it to Lewis. He'll know what to do. You'll just get in trouble, warned Joy. Lewis will think you robbed the bank. You'll go to jail for the rest of your life. Lewis knows I'm not a bank robber, said Mauricia. But what if he, what if the real bank robbers find out that you have their money, asked Joy. They'll come after you and murder you. Oh, I didn't think about that, said Mauricia. You better give it to me, said Joy. Lewis will protect me, said Mauricia. She walked across the playground. Lewis was talking to Terrence. He said, if you ever, if you ever tie Leslie's pigtails to the tether pole again, I'll... Lewis, look, said Mauricia. She held the paper sack up to his face. No, thank you, Mauricia. I'm not hungry, said Lewis. It's not my lunch, said Mauricia. Look inside. Lewis took the bag from her and looked inside. Very nice, he said, and gave it back to her. Now, I want you to go untie Leslie and tell her. He suddenly stopped talking and blinked his eyes. He looked at Terrence, then he looked at Mauricia, then Terrence, then Mauricia, and then the paper sack. Let me see that again, he said. Mauricia gave him the bag. Hey, what about me, asked Terrence. Get lost, Jack Frost, said Lewis. Terrence ran away. Did you rob a bank, asked Lewis. No, I found it in the bushes, said Mauricia. I believe you, said Lewis. We'll have to put it in the lost and found. I know, said Mauricia. Whoever lost it is probably very sad. But if no one claims it in two weeks, you can have it, said Lewis. He took the bag of money and headed to the office. Joy was waiting for Lewis at the door. Hey, Lewis, she said, I lost a bag full of money. Have you seen it? Help! Leslie screamed from the tether ball court. A week later, Mauricia was eating lunch alone. She was eating a piece of sweet potato pie. Joy was crawling around in the dirt looking for more bags of money. Mauricia, said Lewis, I'll like, I'd like you to meet someone. This is Mr. Finch. Mr. Finch was an old man with white hair and a long white beard. He shook Mauricia's hand with both of his hands. It's your money, isn't it? asked Mauricia. Mr. Finch nodded. It was my life savings, he said. For 50 years I made pencils. I got a penny for every pencil I made. 
I don't even like pencils. But finally, I saved enough money to quit my job and do what I always wanted to do. What's that, asked Mauricia. I'm going to open my own ice cream bar, he said. And then he started to cry. Stella, come here. Come here. Hey, come here. Come on, baby. Stella, come here. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. Then he started to cry. When I lost that money, I thought I'd have to start making pencils again. Mauricia cried, too. Here, I want you to have this, blubbered Mr. Finch. He gave her an envelope containing $500. It was the second largest amount of money Mauricia had ever had. And I will give you free ice cream for the rest of your life in my ice cream parlor, he promised. Thank you, said Mauricia. No, thank you, said Mr. Finch. I'm so glad someone as kind and as honest as you found it. There are so many dishonest people in the world. It's good to know there are still good people too. They hugged each other. Joy crawled out of the bushes. Hey, who's that, she asked. This is Mr. Finch, said Mauricia. It's his money. Look, he gave me a reward of $500 and I'll get free ice cream for the rest of my life. Well, what about me, Joy demanded. Don't I get anything? Oh dear me, said Mr. Finch. I didn't realize there was someone else involved. Mauricia would never have found the money if it wasn't for me, said Joy. Mm -hmm. Why, what did you do, asked Lewis. I stole her lunch, Joy said proudly. So, her reward, Mr. Finch gave her a pencil. And that's the end of chapter 27. I'm glad Mauricia got a lifetime supply of ice cream. All right, chapter 28 is called Valouche. Looks like they're going to be doing some dancing in chapter 28. And then chapter 29 is called The Lost Ear. Uh-oh, someone's getting a haircut and it's titled The Lost Ear. Oh, jeez. Oh my, and then we've got our last chapter, which is called Wayside School is Falling Down. So we only have three more chapters, guys. <laughs> All right, sorry it was a little bit noisy out here, dog barking, the, the cover was blowing in the wind. Looks like my fire went out <laughs> while I was reading, so I'll have to restart that, but it's nice out here. I like to read outside. I hope you guys are keeping up with your reading. Go outside, find a nice quiet spot, and curl up with a good book. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.